More on Malarian and Batesian mimicry. Jane Van Zant Brouwer from the Department of Zoology at Yale wrote about mimicry in the 1950s. One of the professors she studied, Dr. Morgan, designed several experiments in the early 1900s to study learning in young birds. One of his most notable observations was that the chicks had a strong impulse to associate a bad feeding experience with a specific color pattern on their food, and would later reject any food pattern similar enough. While this kind of learned response is helpful to birds and other predators to teach them what's safe to eat, it can be just as helpful to their prey in a few different ways. This video explains Malarian and Batesian mimicry, two ways in which prey species use color patterns to deter predators. Malarian mimicry is a phenomenon by which one poisonous species mimics the physical appearance of another similar poisonous species in order to avoid predation by common predators. In layman's terms, it's when two poisonous species are being eaten by the same predator, so they slowly evolve to look alike. So when a predator learns not to eat one, the other is also protected. We all know what this butterfly looks like. It's called a monarch butterfly, and it's poisonous to many kinds of birds. But is this butterfly a monarch too? They look exactly the same, but it's actually a viceroy butterfly, a completely different species, and it's equally as poisonous to birds as its cousin the monarch. They have evolved to look alike so they can both be safer from their predators by flashing a common warning signal, their wing patterns. Some people may wonder, if both species are poisonous, does it matter if they look alike? After all, they're both protected from predators by their toxicity. Why not just use different warning signals? Well, it turns out when they use the same warning signal, attacks are reduced from 16% on each population, or 32% of their combined population, to a little less than 16% of their combined population, or around 8% for each. This means that by sharing a warning signal, the two butterflies are actually twice as safe from predators. Batesian mimicry is a little more tricky. In this case, one non-poisonous species evolves slowly to look like a poisonous one, so its predators will avoid it, thinking it could do them harm. There's one problem with Batesian mimicry. Scientists question if the poisonous species being mimicked disappears from the area, will the mimics still be protected by their costume? After all, predators in most cases aren't born knowing what not to eat. If there's no poisonous prey to make you sick, you won't learn how to avoid prey that looks like it. Scientists in the southern United States actually did a study to test this theory using habitats of king snakes, non-poisonous snakes who mimic a species of poisonous snake called the coral snake. They placed fake rubber snakes with the coral snake pattern in different areas, one where the coral snakes live and one where no coral snakes live. Attacks on these snakes were measured by counting the number of bite marks on the rubber snakes after a period of four months. Where coral snakes lived, there were a lot less attacks on the rubber snakes that looked like them. In fact, in the areas with no coral snakes, the rubber coral snakes were about seven times as likely to be attacked, which tells us that effective Batesian mimicry does depend on the presence of the poisonous species being mimicked.